So the Across the Province um, touring program is run by the Vancouver Art Gallery, which partners with a couple of institutions across the province of British Columbia um, to present about one exhibition to about three or four venues annually. The Across the Province program was an initiative sponsored by the Killey Foundation, and it was uh, started in 2006, and the Poet Exit Space is the 11th installment of the program. And all of the exhibitions are curated by the Vancouver Art Gallery, and it's a really wonderful way for us to share not only the important resource that is our permanent collection, which consists of more than 12,000 works of art, but also to share our collective expertise. So it's not really just the curatorial staff that um, helps curate the projects, but also the staff that does the conservation work, the registration, the preparation, the installation work, um, all of whom come together to prepare the artworks to go on uh, tours for to different venues across the province. So the show was originally conceived for the Vancouver Art Gallery and presented there in 2015. Um, so at the Vancouver Art Gallery, we often do what we consider vertical programming. So an exhibition on the first floor will relate in some way, although maybe not immediately obvious, to exhibitions on the upper floors as well. Um, so in 2015, there was an exhibition called Cezanne and the Modern, Masterpieces of European Art from the Perlman Collection. And the real star of that exhibition were various watercolors by Cezanne. And so Dinah Ogaitis and I, who was the chief curator at the time, were tasked with the task of um, preparing a permanent collection exhibition that would respond in some way to the exhibition on the ground floor. Um, so we really looked at Cezanne in terms of the revolutionary way that he fractured form in his work. So instead of trying to create perspectival depth in his paintings, he often replaced kind of a seamless integration with something less literal, um, less immediately representational and more fractured, often breaking objects into their geometric parts and really took that as a jumping off point for considering the way that various artists um, across generations have looked at space through their work. So when the Poetics of Space went to various venues across the province, we made sure to include key works from the original presentation. For example, you know, in this presentation, we have been able to bring here um, a work by Emily Carr as well as by Lauren Harris but also really to make sure that the overall depth and breadth of the collection was um, displayed here. So we've included painting, sculpture, uh, works on paper, video work, um, and also works in a wide range of dates. So the earliest painting dates from 1927 and the most recent work dates to 2012. So the exhibition really looks at the countless ways that artists examine space. So at the beginning, we're looking at um, space more optically. So how does an artist translate a three-dimensional world onto a two-dimensional plane? Then we move into um, more of the way space might have an emotional impact. How do people inhabit homes? How does a house really become a home? Um, how do people relate and live in spaces? And then the third section really looks at space in terms of a conceptual framework. So how do we define space? What are its geographical limits? What are kind of its conceptual boundaries? But the exhibition takes its title from a book um, called The Poetics of Space by Gaston Bachelard, which was first published in 1958. And that really examines space experientially. So really how people live in homes, how architecture um, is a lived in experience. And that really um, determines the way that we psychologically respond to buildings and the spaces that we inhabit. So I first curated, co-curated this exhibition with the gallery's chief curator at the time, Diana Agaitis, and she had already been at the gallery for about 15 years and I had been there for some 10 odd years when we curated the exhibition. So we were already you know, reasonably familiar with the gallery's permanent collection. Almost all the works in the exhibition were from the permanent collection with a few select loans. And so many of the works that are included, for example, the Emily Carr, the Lauren Harris, and even contemporary works by art artists like Jason McLean were works that we were very familiar with. Um, but we really relish the opportunity to do a deep dive into the gallery's permanent collection and look at some of the more than 12,000 works that we have, going through our gallery's database, um, looking at images, doing research to really hone in on works that we thought would fit well into our sections. Um, as we were going through uh, the list of works and creating a preliminary list of works, we really noticed the way that artists in the early part of the 20th century were really focusing on space in a more kind of pictorial way. And then the more contemporary artists were looking at space often in a really conceptual framework. Then there was a whole group of artists that were really looking at houses and homes and the way that we inhabit spaces. And that's how we kind of came to our three sections for the exhibition. 
I hope that visitors get a sense of the expansive and multifaceted way that artists really consider space, and the sense that any idea, complex or simple, can be really examined in a huge variety of ways, and artists really give us an opportunity to do that. I also hope that visitors really get a sense of the depth and breadth of the Vancouver Art Gallery's permanent collection, which does have more than 12,000 objects, including paintings, sculptures, works on paper, installations, video work, um, and this show really presents only 40 of those 12,000 plus works.